Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. One second to have missed an opportunity you got that changed your life. When you think about these things that look like coincidences, you begin to see the finger of God directing your life. How you met the person you met and the blessings that came from there. How you listened to that message you thought was a coincidence that opened up your spirit to another dimension and now you have become a preacher. There are no coincidences with God. It is the mighty hand of God. And so in one minute while you are seated, I know I'm thanking my God, but can you join me to say thank you? Find something that you say thank you to the Lord Jesus for. If you don't have something to tell the Lord, you are not serious. Find something in the name of Jesus. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well, Jesus. You have done me well. 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 You have done me As I took out time to reflect on my own life, I just began to nod my head and I was, I was literally, I'm not an emotional person. People say I don't cry. I say you are joking. You are just not there when I cry. I don't cry. I don't waste my tears for vanities, but I cry. When it is time to cry before God and I sat back thinking about my life, it's such a great blessing to be me. And I'm grateful to God. I took out time to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is already a message for someone you came here grumbling, complaining. I was told a story of someone who was angry with God and life and he got a rope and was looking for a corner to hang himself. Angrily moving. And while he carried the rope and he was on his way going, he saw some beggar who was seated and was watching him and he said sir where are you going he said to hang myself i'm tired of god tired of life and he said please two requests since you are going to die can you remove your clothes and help me with it after all you are going to die so what are you covering again and the man stood there and thought oh so these clothes i'm wearing that i take for granted is someone's prayer point some of you have come writing all kinds of things and you will receive but you see, you must always pay attention to the things that he has done and the things that he's doing for life, for health, for wisdom. You may not have money, but all your friends are godly people. You may not have resources at the moment, but there is wisdom. There is understanding of scripture. Hallelujah. We thank you in Jesus' name. So learn gratitude is something that I learned is a powerful spiritual mystery. Gratitude is a multiplier. Please listen, everybody. Gratitude is a multiplier. Anything you say thank you for, you are authorized to have more of. Let me take it again. Gratitude is a multiplier. Anything you can thank God for, you are authorized to have more of it. Father, thank you for wisdom. What you just said is, Lord, I'm ready for a higher dimension of wisdom. Thank you for 10 Naira. You are saying, I'm ready for 100 Naira. You grumble over 10 Naira, you are ready for an empty pocket. Are we together? You subscribe for more in the spirit by thanking God for what he has done. 
Lord, I'm trusting you for this level of the anointing, this level of wealth, this level of influence. I am a pastor. Thank you because I have 10 members who are faithful. And God says, you can thank me for 10 members. You are ready for 30. Thank you, oh God, for 100. You are ready for 1,000. Hallelujah. You must learn gratitude. Learn gratitude. This is my first message to you, my precious people, and then to the body of Christ. There are many legitimate reasons to complain. Many legitimate reasons to see as though God was supposed to have done this and has not done that. Once you program yourself to always see what God is doing. For the things you have done. For the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of my praise. We magnify your name. For the things you have done and the battles you have won, only you are worthy of my praise. We magnify your name. One more time. For the things you have done and the battles you have won, only you are worthy. Do you know, when you get busy thanking God, you will not even know when the next miracles arrive. While you are waiting, don't sit down wondering. Waiting in unbelief will plant anger in your heart. Are we together? And become a blockade to, do, to the blessings that are on their way to you. Always see what God is doing. This is a message for someone. Like our dear sister, the very touching testimony there. Apostle, I'm still waiting for a child. But thank God you have a, a sensible husband that you can have a child with. Are we together? There are people who have children. One is an armed robber. The other is a prostitute. The other one is in the prison. Are we together? The other one is in court. What kind of children are those? Will you like to have those kind of children? And they sit down and admire barren people and they say, it was better I never had a child. That is the hand of God. There are others, oh God, you have not prospered me. If you had prosperity without an understanding of preservation, they would have killed you right from your village for being, for being a prosperous person. They would tear your destiny into pieces. But God preserved you. Listen, I'm not wasting your time. I'm teaching you how to live with wisdom, to thank God. I live a very, very grateful life all the time. But at special moments like this in my life, I take out time to thank him. And don't you think I'm thanking him just because of the results and what he's made out of my life? I tell you sincerely, even if it was not the case today, I would still be grateful. It's a culture you must practice. You sit down with a cup of gari, you say thank you while you are taking it. Don't just admire someone and say, God, are you not alive? Leave all those things and say thank you. Hallelujah. For someone, this is the message for you. Don't, don't sit down wondering, God, won't you do this? I know it's human, but make sure that your heart is ever grateful. One more time, say thank you, Jesus. I'm seeing so many people outside. Those of you outside, shout a loud hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The hand of God. You are a man of God here in ministry. Thank God, oh. Don't sit down and say, God, when will you bring members? When will you bring this? When will I smile too? When will I become a celebrity? And God will say, the day you don't want to become. The day you forget about that and focus on me. When I become the epicenter of your life. That is the day you experience my hand. Hallelujah. So my first message for you tonight is to be grateful as a culture. Don't wait until notable events happen in your life before you are grateful. Your gratitude must be a practice that comes to you by revelation. You get up in the morning, you thank him. There's a song we used to sing, Whenever I see another breaking of day i say thank you lord thank you lord whenever i see another breaking of day i say thank you lord thank you lord 
Some of you, the way you slept, if, if you had died like that, you would have gone to hell straight because you were not even saved. But you woke up and now today is a chance for you to be saved. Number two, my second charge to you tonight is that you must make up your mind to be a blessing by living for a cause beyond yourself. Write it down. Make up your mind. Use tonight's miracle service to make a determination that I will be a blessing and that by living for a cause beyond myself. Selfish living is a recipe for failure and frustration. Listen carefully. You must make up your mind as a covenant with yourself and your destiny today that I will be a blessing by living for a cause that is beyond myself. Make up your mind to live for a cause that is beyond yourself. In Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3, speaking to Abraham and prophetically to all believers, it says, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Say in me. Say through me. Shout it. Say in me. And through me shall all the nations, shall all the families be blessed. Do you know how rewarding and fulfilling it is to have people say you are the reason why I am blessed today? You are the reason why I came to know Jesus Christ. You are the reason why I've been healed today. You have become a conduit for my transformation. It is a very, very selfish and mediocre way of living when you are at the center of your whole world there are people who never nobody can say thank you because of you i've gone to school today because of you i have food to eat because of you i've given my life to jesus it's all about me no that's not a wise way to live you become a blessing not by taking. You become a blessing not just by being wealthy. You become a blessing not just by being enlightened. You become a blessing by living for a cause beyond yourself. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. Very quickly, Philippians 2. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, verse 2, reading to 4. Fulfill ye my joy, he says, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Verse 3, it says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, he says, let each esteem other. Is that in your Bible? Better than themselves. He's not saying to demean yourself, but he's, it's a state of mind. He said, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. In other words, let your life be a blessing to someone. Let your life be the reason why a family can smile. Let your life be the reason why a believer can become mature. Do not become a conduit for destruction. Do not become a conduit for the destruction of lives or families. No, your life should be a blessing. And that comes by living for a cause greater than yourself. Look up. Do you know that everything God created was designed to find fulfillment by living for others. A mango tree does not eat its own mango. Are we together? Yes. A banana tree does not eat its own banana. The beauty is that they go through that labor and grow, produce the fruits. Are we together? And then you come and take them. Whilst you are coming, you, you pluck the mangoes or the oranges with joy. And it does not feel bad because within it is capacity to produce again. That was the purpose of it, therefore. If for many of you, the reason why your life does not seem to find fulfillment, sometimes in spite of the physical things that keep coming, is because you have not sustained an orientation that is, is a more superior way to live when you live serving others. Spending your entire life looking for money, looking for fame, looking for a name, those things do not create fulfillment. Trust me. When you spend your life becoming a blessing,
that someone looks at you and he says thank you thank you thank you because of your life God has helped me to be what I am today the greatest testimony out of all the things that people say about me people send me thousands of text messages and I'm grateful for but the greatest testimony is not even healing it's not even you know all of these things but the transformation apostle thank you I met Jesus through your life or through your meeting my mind is changed today I'm a responsible believer a responsible father look what has happened the transformation hallelujah true leadership in the kingdom according to Matthew chapter 20 when you read from verse 25 to 28 Matthew 20 25 to 28 but Jesus called them unto him and said ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them and they that are great exercise authority over them 26 it says but it shall not be so among you whosoever will be great look at Jesus's definition the kingdom's idea of greatness whosoever will be great among you let him be your minister the word minister there is servant 27 and whosoever will be chief among you let him be your servant 28 even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto but to minister even to give his life as a ransom for many you know you are selfish when everything revolves around you it is me if you are in a group you are the only one who wants to be heard i am the one in fact let me tell you this <clears throat> your greatest testimony is the lives that can be changed through your life hallelujah are you learning yes if you come and testify and you tell me i bought a car i will pray for you and clap for you god gave me children pray for you and clap for you I am now a billionaire. I'll pray for you and clap for you. Doors have been opened. I'll pray for you and clap for you. But if you bring someone and say, Apostle, by the grace of God, God has used me to raise this boy from secondary school now to university. God has used me to bring this man. He used to be an unbeliever as a husband. Now look how this man is, is a sound believer. Look how he's running his family according to the will of God. Now you are speaking my language. Transformation that it is not just about you i have this i have that don't get me wrong getting things are not i'm going to be praying for you but a, a a nobler way of living is when your entire life i rather live an average life by any definition you think and and transfer that remaining energy in lifting others and helping others than to live a life that we purport to be successful but at the end of it, nobody can become a testimony of your being alive. No. Make up your mind, second instruction, to be a blessing by living for a cause beyond yourself. You are a man of God. Realize that he called us into this work to serve, not just to make a name. He's not called us into celebrity living. If you want to be a celebrity, there are many other ways of making that happen. But if you sign up to be a minister of the gospel, your life should be ministered, a, a, a vehicle that ministers to people. And the truth is that if you are doing your job well, you will not remain small. The people will be too grateful to allow you to remain small. But you see, let me tell you, members and God's people are not fools. They know people who love them sincerely and are pouring their hearts to help them you can pretend it and fake it and say oh you know I love you but they look at you and they know that there is no genuine passion for them love is feelable compassion the desire to see people rise the desire to see people know God to be lifted to leave them better than you met them hallelujah people give to me a lot and I'm grateful and every time people give to me for me I almost feel guilty receiving from people because immediately I become indebted to them this is my assignment okay now you've given me this whatever the gift is how can I improve this person's life and then especially if it's from strangers what spiritual investment have I made in your life my greatest joy is to see lives change because of this grace that he has placed upon our lives that is why we stretch ourselves from pillar to post, from border to border. 
to make our contributions to see that lives are transformed. If that becomes your determination from tonight, shout a loud amen. amen. That I will live my life. And don't say I don't have money. It's a lie. If an armed robber kidnaps you now or your loved ones, in two days you will cough out money that you claim you do not have. So don't even bring those flimsy excuses. The Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart will be. The day you see a small child who 10,000 naira can help that child to go back to school. We are not talking about being a billionaire and being a... Number one, God will not even give you that kind of money because your heart is not inclined to being a blessing. Listen, I don't mean to frustrate your expectations tonight. Keep your prayer request. I will pray on it. But let me tell you sincerely, if you have 10 cars, you are not going to split your legs and put one in this Jeep, one in this... Well, as, as wonderful as that is. If you have a bag of rice, this is the size of your stomach as you are looking at me like this. Once it is full, no matter how greedy you are, God designed it that it will not enter again. You see the intelligence of God to teach you a lesson that nothing he gives you is all for you. Are we together? Nothing he gives you is all for you. There is bread to the eater and seed to the sower. One more time. Bread to the eater and seed to the sower. If you sow your bread, it's not wise. If you eat your seed, it's not wise. There are special moments where you can sow both bread and seed. It's called sacrifice. That you cast your bread upon the waters. He said after many days you will find it. But based on God's principle, the bread is for your eating. Eating, the seed is for your sowing hallelujah I've made a commitment that in life and in death I will be a blessing if I die today the only thing will just be that I didn't finish my assignment but I'm, I'm grateful that I'll be able to leave something that you can immortalize your impact beyond you all these things we will run around God forbid I can talk about death because I will not die but if I die today you will try to pray to raise me back to life. After praying one by one, you will start leaving that room. <laughs> you will start getting tired and say, you know what? I'm sure he doesn't want to come back. And you'll be right. And once that happens, you will just... Are we together? Yes. You will don't be in the ground and that's the end of it. Write all kinds of things. Cry and sing as if you will never recover. One week, I'm telling you, you are back. How long? You will still remember and cry, but believe me, you will get back. You will remember that you need to make money, you need to move around, and before you know it, that's it. But the point I'm trying to communicate is that if you become so attached to things in life, you are carrying a burden that by itself will kill you. There is nothing in this life. I've made a covenant with my life nothing will ever attach itself to me money fame thank god for those things but i see them as strange as they are you know how a wireless mic is you can benefit from it but it has no physical connection to you some of you as you are listening to me now is paining you because you came with all kinds of lusts the way you are connected to money connected to fame connected to everything i just want to make it and you will make it but the believer's orientation is that you're a missionary are we together now that all that god gives you while you serve his purposes should not distract you i'm saying this so that as i pray for you and the doors of finances open supernatural intelligence you have it at the back of your mind that the purpose of these things is to empower you you have been taught here but your focus should be to be a blessing. Serving Jesus, serving humanity. That is the way of wisdom. Number three. My third charge tonight is that you must become a passionate lover of God. Number one, I said to be grateful. Practice gratitude as a lifestyle. Gratitude must become a spiritual orientation that you burn 
on the tablets of your heart that for all seasons, regardless how comfortable and favorable they are, remain grateful. Number two, that you must make up your mind to be a blessing by living for a cause that is beyond yourself. You must erode that lifestyle of self-centeredness and begin to think of others, how your life can count by being a blessing. And then number three, that you must be a passionate lover of God and men. God and men. If you love God and you do not love men, you are a hypocrite. If you love men and you do not love God, you are self-centered. The truth is that if you truly love God in that order, you will love men. Matthew chapter 22 from verse 36. A passionate lover of God. Master, he said, which is the great commandment in the law? Reading to 40. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Next verse. This is the first and great commandment. Verse 39. It says, The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Do you know what this means? That all the law, the whole instructions that they got in the Old Testament was to achieve this purpose. To bring you to a point where you love the Lord sincerely and you love men. You must be a passionate lover of God. It's almost natural to love men when you love God. Look at me. To believe God does not necessarily mean to love him. You can believe him because you know he's mighty. That is not love. That is faith. Are we together now? The Bible says authentic faith works by love. Please listen. You must love God with all your heart. So tonight is an opportunity to rekindle your passion for Jesus. For many of you who, for whatever reason, your passion for him has gone down let me share with you very briefly i thought to add this there are a few benefits i need to tell you this we love god ultimately for who he is but i will tell you in the name of jesus and in the name of honesty there are untold benefits that follow any believer who loves god let me give you a few of them number one exodus chapter 20 from verse 5 to 6 we're discussing being a passionate lover of god Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Let's read verse 6 together. Ready? One to read. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Everybody say mercy. One more time, shout it, say mercy. mercy. So, you are entitled to experiencing the mercy and the kindness of God when you become a genuine lover of God. Most people think mercy is for sinners. No, the Bible says it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. If you keep favor and you keep mercy, I will pick mercy. Because until you are shown mercy, you cannot find favor. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. The mercy of God is powerful. Go online and listen to my teaching. I've done an extensive teaching on the mercy of God. Number two, what is the second benefit of being a passionate lover of God? Judges chapter 5 and verse 31. Judges 5.31, ever-increasing greatness. Ah, this is true. Ever-increasing greatness. Show me a passionate lover of God. I show you a man whose greatness will never plateau. It says, so let all thine enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. It says, and the land had rest 40 years. The B part is the verse of emphasis. But let them that love him be as the sun. Give us Amplified. Let's see what Amplified says. Let them, this same scripture, Amplified. He says, but let those who love him be like the sun when it rises in its might. 
does that look like the Bible, the scripture in Proverbs chapter 4, the path of the just? You want genuine greatness that does not go down? Be a lover of God. Passionately in love with Jesus. And I'm telling you, everything men see about you only becomes the foundation for the next level of greatness. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. I remember in one of my birthdays, I think three or four years ago, if I'm not mistaken, maybe three, four, the Lord spoke to me and the scripture he gave me was, Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on outside. And I'm telling you from that season, it was a new dimension of greatness for me. 71, 21 Psalm. Thou shall increase. You are already great, but he can increase your greatness. When the great call you great, your greatness is increased. May that be someone's testimony. Amen. Shout a believing amen. amen. Thou shall increase my greatness, he says, and comfort me on all sides. So this is the second benefit of becoming a genuine lover of God. Ever increasing greatness. Can I give you one more? Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. I like this. We know, he says, that all things work together for good to them that love God. Is that in your Bible? All things work together for good. That means for a genuine lover of Jesus Christ, there are no disadvantages in his or her life. And believe me when I say this, that in the dealings of God with men who love him, he can route anything, no matter how it starts, it will always end up a testimony. This is why you see the lives of people. It doesn't matter whether it's a problem with their job, whether it's a problem with their health. When you see anything that looks like it is negative in their life, they don't even mind it because this scripture has given them confidence. All things work together for good. So you can lose your job and whilst people expect you to be mourning and saying, how will my bills be paid? Supernaturally, someone just comes and says, I'm looking for a regional director here. Are you free? And you say, I just lost my job. And the person says, thank you, Jesus, because I've been looking for someone like you. How do you explain that kind of thing? Is it a coincidence? Mm -mm. All things work together for the good of them that love God. The good of them that love God the good of them that love God. Every time you love God, be rest assured that no matter what you see in your life at the moment, once it is uncomfortable, the love of God mandates and insists that he remains with you until it turns into praise. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Because Jesus was a lover of God, his father, even when he died, he died for only three days. After three days, he came back to life. And that death that was supposed to be a thing of shame and disgrace has now become the hallmark of the believer's faith. The scars in his hand that was once upon a time a symbol of pain, weakness, and defeat is today a testament of glory. I've told you that when you go to heaven, one of the ways you will know who Jesus is is not by the light that emanates from him alone, not just by the crown upon his head, not just he that sits at the right hand of the Father, but the only one who carries this notable scar, the scar that portrays redemption. For someone, if the challenges did not happen around your life, you probably will not be here for this miracle service tonight. But thanks to whatever it is that has happened, now you are here. The love of Jesus brought you because he saw intrinsically within your heart that you were a sincere person loving the Lord. And he said, no, I will not let this woman, I will not let this man, I will not let this young lady, this gentleman, this preacher, I cannot leave you without help. I am still Ebenezer. I come through for those who love me. All things work together for the good all things work together for the good all things work together for the good provided you love him with all your heart provided you love him with all your heart not just serving him in hypocrisy so that you will receive things loving him for who he is but that in loving him he has vowed that these among many benefits will come to you let me repeat them again one, you become a candidate for his mercy and his kindness. 
to ever increasing greatness number three that all things work together for you all things it doesn't matter what it is hallelujah do you believe that praise the name of the Lord and now you have come tonight I truly believe that tonight um, is a special miracle service for many reasons among them I think moments like this are not just times for God to announce a man but it's 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 a moment where he stamps his hand upon the mandate and the covenant that has even brought you to that point where people can celebrate you this is what I believe now when you read the Bible birthdays were unusual moments in scripture among the many things that birthdays do birthdays were moments where unusual requests were granted you read the Bible hallelujah a prophet's head went away on a birthday or the request for it is that true a prophet mighty prophet coming in the spirit and the power of Elijah John the Baptist a little girl demanded for his head upon a plate and he said she wants the head in a charger and the king respected it and John's head went away and the Bible says if you've been evil know how to give good gifts that means tonight is an opportunity that you can cash in on and say father I know I believe you as always but taking advantage of this moment you see listen crops agriculturally speaking crops can grow at any time but when it is rainy season you have an advantage the burden of looking for water has been taken away from you am I right on that yes you can use irrigation and farm during the dry season as we call it in Africa and in Nigeria but once you are farming during the rainy season you now have an added advantage because the season itself supports you this is how today is that any other day would have still been safe to receive in Christ but that there are unusual moments where heavens the heavens are opened in a way so as to stamp the covenant that he has with his own and you can take advantage of that moment and believe what I'm saying you've seen people come to testify you should make up your mind that within the few minutes that we have today that every prophetic declaration that comes I'm not just going to shout amen carelessly you can do you know it is possible to walk out of this place just excited and then never return with a testimony because the Bible says they heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it I know that many of us have come with all kinds of burdens listen there is a mandate that God has placed upon our lives to see to it that weeping ends over every life that comes here it is true it's not just a desire it is a mandate when God gives you a mandate, the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards, 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 2, that a man be found faithful. When God gives you a mandate and makes you a steward, like Paul will say, that we are stewards of the mysteries of God. So he has granted us the grace. He's granted us the anointing. The speakings are not empty words, no. You receive them by faith and a spiritual reaction begins. Please, I want you to believe this. The miraculous is a possibility. Don't you get used to people playing games and just believe that everybody is playing that. Miracles are real. The power of God can be demonstrated here and now. Mama, listen to me. It is possible that as you have come here now, God can rewrite the stories of your, your destiny, your children, just like that. He said, let Naaman come and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. And as soon as he came, he sent word. He said, tell him to go and wash seven times. And the king was offended. He said, I thought you would come out and salute me and with energy do a few things. And the prophet said, that is your business. You want to be well? Go and obey the instruction. And the little girl advised him again. You can imagine he went to um, uh, 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 the, the, the river and he went down once, twice, three times. If he was angry and offended, he would have gone back looking like a child who went to play in the mud five six and seven the bible says when he came out his skin became like that of a baby 
Listen, this grace that God gives men, eh? If it is not here, it is not here. It's as simple as that. The anointing is not something to play um, what we call abracatabra. If you have it, you have it. If it is not there, ladies and gentlemen, it is not there. You can assume it is there. Once it is there, it speaks. It's as simple as that. You actually believe that tonight you will live with no testimonies? No. No. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. You will not suffer my foot to be moved. Carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. I'm just a mortal, but you are the awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. Ordinary men, I agree, but when His hand comes upon them, ordinary men, I agree. But they cease to be noisemakers when that grace comes. Ordinary men, I agree, but not when the hand of the Lord comes upon Samson. You can bind him for as long as the anointing has not come. But when it comes, that, that chain becomes like flax before the fire. Ordinary men, I agree, but not when the Holy Ghost comes upon Mary. Is it not in your Bible? How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And he said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. That the power of the highest. The power of the highest. Listen. Ladies and gentlemen. I present to you the possibilities that happen when God is at work in a man. He said, great is the mystery of godliness. It is a mystery that takes the spirit for you to understand that ordinary men, frail in every way, you can see their frailty, but not when the Holy Ghost rests upon them. When that grace comes upon a man, Saul becomes Paul. When that grace comes upon a man, weak Gideon who is hiding suddenly can blow a trumpet and 33,000 people can come out. You will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. prophesy over a woman and tell her according to the time of life listen many many people do not know the power the anointing of the Holy Spirit is not electricity no no without the power of God we are noisemakers on stage in fact a burden to civilization God will not gather you thousands and tens of thousands of you all over across this auditorium and outside how will he bring you here and just allow you to waste your time oh no you are not hearing cunningly devised fables ladies and gentlemen it was not only a message he gave with that message he gave power he said tarry now that you have received the message tarry until ye be endued with power until ye be endued with power against unclean spirits power against all the assaults of the enemy he said but you shall receive power after the holy ghost is come upon you it takes power to rewrite that narrative it takes power the speakings of men the difference between just an intellectual presentation and the speakings that become prophetic is the power of god You will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your power everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me.
You can doubt what a man is saying if he's speaking on his own. But when that power comes, when that power comes, the prophet said, bring me a mistral. And the moment they played the mistral, he said, the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, you shall not see wind. You shall not see rain yet. By an agency that you may not understand. And I'm saying this prophetically already to someone. You shall not see wind. You shall not see rain. You shall not see wind. My God, fire is falling in this place. You shall not see wind. You shall not see rain. Yet your valley shall be filled with water. You shall not see wind. You shall not see rain. Yet your valley shall be filled with water. When you read your Bible, you find written here the works of God manifestations of the great power of God it was on account of the display of his power that they sang the songs of Miriam he said I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously even the horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea written here in your Bible was the manifestation of the hand of God revealed as ten plagues in Egypt from one plague after the other a testament of the almightiness of God is it not in your Bible that Joshua spoke to the Son and commanded it to stand still because victory must be wrought is it not in your Bible not a parable that the walls of Jericho such a formidable city that nothing went in and nothing went out but at that shout of Tehillah the shout of God's people the Bible says that Jericho sank it went down flat is it not in your Bible that once upon a time God's people in the days of Jehoshaphat three kings came together in unity that they were going to defeat God's people and he said no this matter is not about war when we fight physically we will lose get the worshipers to lead the way this one it, it has to be the Judah tribe that goes forward and the Bible says they began to sing that you are good and your mercies endure forever and the Lord set ambushment in the camp of the enemy they began to kill themselves and the Bible says the last help to kill the other person your Bible that the things that are written aforetime the Bible says they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of Scripture might find hope I believe the Word of God I believe in the power of God that when the power of God rests upon a man that is the end of the story your assignment is to do whatever it takes to secure the safe arrival of that power but when it comes but when it comes, the wonder-working power of God. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 5, the Bible says, Philip went down to Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. Verse 6, the Bible says, the people gave heed with one accord, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Verse 7, it says, for unclean spirits crying out with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies that were lame were healed. As a result, there was great joy in that city. It says, he that you have asked for nothing, it says, ask and you will receive that your joy might be full. He that told you have asked for nothing but ask. Ask without sparing, he says. Ask without sparing. You have a benevolent father. Which of you whose child will ask him for bread and you will give him a stone or fish and you will give him a serpent? He said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly father will give that to those who ask him? Do you believe this? I'm saying this to provoke faith in you. You've heard the testimonies. You can insist. Listen, Apostle, when does my miracle happen? The day your faith says today. If your faith says July miracle service, God will respect it. If your faith says November miracle service or any of the services, that's fine. 
but I'm here tonight for those who are insisting that I will not allow this grace I will not allow this moment to be wasted listen can I tell you this if it is not impossible you don't need faith the assignment of faith is to make impossible things become possible are we together once it is possible you need wisdom the assignment of faith is the moment it is a dimension that is beyond your human comprehension now step back and allow and allow faith to work the moment it is not impossible so don't tell me apostle you don't know that, that is exactly the assignment of faith to convert impossible things are we together Don't let the devil deceive you and say, how will it happen? How will it start? That is none of your business. Yours is to believe. Is it true that I will sing the songs of praises? Yes. The songs of, of joy and, and, and praises of gladness and, lament, and, and take away lamentation from my life. Yes, if you decide to. God is not a herbalist. You sit down and you're watching and you say, wow, these people are shouting amen. They, they are, it looks like they are joyful people. I assure you, we'll share the grace and you can carry your burden and walk away with it and be angry and say, God, don't make the mistake of Jacob. The Lord was in this place, he said, and I knew not. Not when his power is here. Once the power of God is here, then you look at what you have written and know that you are looking at it for the last time. You are looking at it for the last time. You are looking at it for the last time. Believe me when I say it, you are looking at it for the last time. The Bible says, just as you do not know the way of the wind or how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child, so also you do not know the way of the Lord. No matter your level of intelligence, there are certain spiritual dynamics that you cannot understand. That one is the office of the Holy Spirit. He is the creative dimension of the Godhead. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, Now the earth was without form, void, darkness was over the face of the deep it says and the spirit of god he still moved everywhere there is darkness chaos confusion leave it to him it is his ministry he knows what to do with darkness he knows what to do with confusion he knows what to do with despair yours is to come to god believing according to hebrews 11 and verse 6 it says now without faith it is impossible to please him he says for he that cometh to god must come believing number one that he is he exists then number two that he is the rewarder the rewarder rewarding you for traveling from outside of this nation to come for this service rewarding you from leaving your house inconveniencing yourself rewarding you for sitting outside scattered across the overflows God is the rewarder did you not know that your sacrifice is a memorial in the spirit that you arrived here since morning some of you have not eaten but you've been waiting patiently the rewarder some of you are men and women of God who have come maybe not to be healed but to contact grace because the assignment that is before you right now the level of anointing you are carrying cannot suffice for that assignment you will need an upgrade an upgrade of unction it says take thee Joshua in whom is the spirit and lay your hands upon him and take some of your honor and give unto him that the nation of Israel may hearken unto him believe God for impartations impartations of graces don't roam around a low level of grace anointing that almost is, is like it's not there no listen a phone light is light but not enough to light a dark room and so if your assignment is to light up a dark room and the light you have is a phone light prepare to be frustrated whether in ministry or whatever it is businessmen you have come with your ideas now shift back and let the power to get wealth be added on your ideas an intelligent idea without the power to get wealth will frustrate you it will look as if the business will work but it will not work 
the assignment of your ideas and your value is to connect you to give you a space within the marketplace the assignment of power is to veto all kinds of prejudices and see to it that the word of the Lord speaks even concerning your business he said the power to get wealth the power to get wealth listen to me and I want you to believe that I know what I'm saying I don't mean to insult your pedigree I know that they are very successful people here but I know something small about success I can tell you no matter what you believe you have if you lack the power to get wealth you are going to be frustrated you will see things passing in front of you but for your hand to hold your portion it may never hold it I'm saying this particularly to businessmen. Don't waste your time moving around saying, I know this one, I know this one. There are forces in the spirit that control results. Your destiny helper does not come because you want them. There is something on you that draws them to you. They can pass you every day. You can even live in the same neighborhood. You can take your, they will never help you except that which is to come, comes upon you. Please listen to what I'm telling you. God wants to end this cycle of frustration. Oh, so, 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 so person in government. He is my man. Forget all that story. If you believe that magically, just because you are related, somebody will help you. Please think again. Think again. It doesn't work that way. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. He does not anoint your cup. It is your head he anoints. But when that anointing touches your head, your cup must react to it. Thou anointest my head with oil. My business runneth over. My job runneth over. The ministry God has given me runneth over. Do you believe what you're hearing? I'm saying that because we're going to step into a moment of intense prayer and I minister I'm going to be doing more of speaking by the Spirit tonight I want you to believe it for God's sake do not there is no reason why we should share the grace and you walk back and not return with a testimony some of you this night even before midnight this night before midnight in the name of Jesus Christ my God will surprise you in ways that you will marvel and you will wonder every man is a maximum of four helpers away listen to me this has been statistically proven no matter what kind of help you need in this life from a human standpoint every man is maximum four helpers away for some of you you have struggled and there are wicked spirits that will not let you rise not let your children rise not let your ministry rise wicked spirits that have vowed as i brought your father down will bring you down too as i brought your sisters i will bring you down too welcome to the house of god this is mount zion and the bible says upon mount zion that there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession I'm telling you, those, those wicked, negative, demonic circles, tonight, right here in this place, they will come to a permanent end in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. One of the graces I'm praying that you will receive tonight for the first time, or greater portions of is the favor of God. Watch this. Samuel comes to the house of Jesse. The prophet is there. The oil is there. And they keep lining all kinds of people, but the oil rejects them. The person to anoint is there. The oil to anoint is there. A head that needs the anointing is there, and the oil said, no. It says, I will not rest. Go. Oh, do you not have one more son? And he says, there's one. He said, go and fetch him. I will not sit what makes a prophet close to you the oil close to you your head is even close to it and yet the oil says i don't want you there is somebody i will not rest and they go and bring this smelly young boy he says that's it that's it many virgins together about to go and seeking hazarus many 
I'm sure everybody was practicing whatever skill they would use before him. And here was this village girl from Shushan. Show me Esther chapter 2 from verse 8 and 9. Watch this. I know we read 15 and 16 and 17, but let me show you 8 and 9. So it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, that when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan, the palace, it says to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also to the king's house. So she was one of the many to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women, verse 9. And the maiden pleased him, Esther now, and she obtained kindness, amplified, I believe, or one of the versions will say she obtained favor of him. Watch this. This is what I want you to see. She obtained his favor. Read the next five words you can see. Use your mind and look for the next five words after favor. Are you ready? One to go. And he speedily gave her. Stop there. He did what? Ah. He did not just give, he speedily gave her. She obtained favor. Others will say, I need this oil, he will forget. After two, oh, I remember. But when a woman who was carrying favor, he speedily gave her. I'm showing somebody your next level here that things will speedily come to you, that men will speedily give you. Believe it and receive it. He speedily gave her. Speedily gave her. Speedily gave her. That was the same grace that was upon the man called Nehemiah, the cup bearer of the king. The Bible says, without him directly asking, the king looked at his countenance and said, Nehemiah, why is your countenance troubled? And he said, I'm troubled because I'm here serving you. And then the walls of Jerusalem is not built. And the king took that initiative by himself. I will give you all the materials that you need and I will write letters to ensure that no one harasses you. That all the resources you need to build, I will give it to you. And the Bible says he went and he began to build. And there were two men who came called Sambalat and Tobias. Their assignment was to stop him from building. But that was too late. The decree of the king had gone forth. And the Bible says with one hand he built and with another hand he held the sword. That's how we build in the kingdom. With one hand your technical skills, but with another hand the word of God is now making that happen. Do you believe that? One more scripture, Ezra 6, 14. Ezra chapter 6, 14. Someone's life is changing. Let's read together. Long read, but be patient. Ready? One to read. And the elders of the Jews built it, and they prospered, uh -huh, through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and then the other king, the king of Persia. Watch this now. Notice. God spoke, but men spoke. He said, they built it and prospered through the prophesying of two prophets. So God gave the decree. The kings agreed, but the prophets made it happen. God, kings, prophets. God gave the commandment. Three kings came together to agree on that commandment, but it did not guarantee that it would be built. The Bible says the actual prosperity of that building happened because of the prophesying of Haggai the prophet. The business will not thrive just because you have a great land that is visible. Through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to June Miracle Service where God will give you a testimony that is undeniable. Undeniable undeniable are you ready to pray rise up on your feet and for the next two or three minutes please no looking left and right with with the determination of one who has come to receive whether you are in all the overflows hall one down to the basement outside following online i want you to open your mouth and in the name of jesus begin to make the please 
make decrees that that which I came for in the name of Jesus my expectations are met speedily so without delay without any wanting is someone praying without delay without any wanting without delay without any wanting without delay without any wanting someone is praying without delay without delay outside are you praying a global family following online make sure you are praying without delay by the power of the Holy Ghost go ahead and pray Ta -da 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 -da. Someone is praying. Listen, please listen. One more prayer point. Hear me. At the start of this year, God gave us a prophetic word that this is the year of open doors. And I did teach you that there are three biblical ways we open doors. Number one is through the use of the right key. You remember that? That when you apply the right key, you can turn a door open. Number two, by knocking. You can knock a door and the person at the other side of the door can open for you. But number three, that doors can be opened by the use of force. You can use force and this one does not just open, it breaks the door. Because when you open a door after you, it can close and your children may not be able to pass. When that door is broken, everybody after you can pass. Did the Bible not say at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed? And they sang and the Bible says the prisoners heard them it says suddenly there was an earthquake this was not a key this was not knocking there was an earthquake it shook the doors and all doors opened. someone open your mouth and declare all doors all doors all doors all doors, all doors. All doors. financial doors marital doors career doors ministry doors are you praying all doors open all doors open all doors open declare ye that thou mightest be justified all doors higher levels of ministry all doors Hallelujah. 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 Do you believe what you just prayed? That gentleman there, lifting up your shoes. Come. You are a footballer. Huh? Where? In this Abuja. You believe in what you are doing? Yes, sir. Do you believe there is a grace? Yes, sir. I'm seeing you go to Europe. Amen. 
Is that your passport you're holding? Yes, sir. Your passport? Yes, sir. You came with your passport? Yes, sir. My friend, do you believe this? Yes, sir. Learn your skill to play. But my dear one, let me tell you, the hand of God can come upon men Amen. and pick ordinary men. Amen. That you believe this and you have come. Yes. Let me pray for you. When I, I saw it, I, I was just stirred in my heart. Remember, Amen. what God says to one, he says to all. It's not, this is not, hallelujah. It doesn't mean that if God does not, it, I don't have to call you, we'll spend the night doing that. Yours is for you to believe. Where are you from? Enugu State, Osoka. There is somebody that God is going to connect you to. Amen. He belongs to a football club called Eimba. Yes. I don't know any much about football or whatever it is, but you just believe from there, God is going to open you up. Amen. And you, will be, you will be surprised. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have granted us grace to lift men. Who is Silas? Silas. Silas. I'm hearing the name Silas. We may not have... I really want to pray to minister to the sick. Silas, where are you? Your story is about to change. Oh, you're a worker here. Silas. Your name is Silas? What do you do? I'm an architect. What do you do? I, I'm working on, uh, in the poultry farm. Okay, let me pray for you. He said, thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Father, I stretch my hands over Silas. Mariam, I'm hearing the name Mariam. Mariam, Mariam. Who is Mariam? Please make sure we don't just jump out. If you are not the one, even if it's your sister, just stand where you are and receive. Once you are not the person, your name is Mariam. Where are you traveling to? Sir. Huh? Canada. You are going to Canada. Yes, sir. When? We're processing it. My husband is there already. Did you tell me? No, How sir. do I look at you and know you are going to Canada? My dear, look at me. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing something stopping you and I don't mean to embarrass you, well, but we have to pray so that they don't bring a report from the hospital that will stop you from going. It is God that lifts men, and it is God that helps men. Hallelujah. Where are you from, my dear, this lady? From Imo State, ma, sir. I want to pray for you. Thank you, In sir. the name of Jesus, Mariam. There are two people here. I'm hearing the cry of children, like children, babies. I'm hearing, I'm not saying you should come out, but I'm going to pray. I know I will have the time to speak, but I'm hearing the cry of children. And the Lord is telling me to release someone's child prophetically in the name of Jesus. I don't know who that person is, but this moment, as you are connected by faith in the name of Jesus. Let it be unto you according to the word of the Lord. Let it be unto you according to the word of the Lord. Let it be unto you according to the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you, Mariam, you have come here in the name of Jesus. My dear, the one whose husband is in Canada, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, let the right of way be given to you. Right now, I release grace upon you. Find favor, favor with the embassy in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm hearing the Lord is saying I should tell somebody, weep not, weep not, the book is open, weep not, the book is open. You have cried and cried and cried. This is not just prophetic, this is physical tears. Weep not, the book is open. In the name of Jesus, I'm declaring by the Spirit, Rako Shalikaba. I'm talking to one of you in front here, weep not, the book is open, weep not, the book is open. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, because the book is open, let crying and mourning come to an end now. Let crying and mourning come to an end now. In the name of Jesus, my footballer friend, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. May God grant you grace that one day you will come and stand here and testify before the people of God. In Jesus' name I pray. 
an architect grace for you, I decree and declare, may God open doors that will surprise you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, there's someone I usually would not, God bless you, I would not do this, but God is insisting. You have a court case. I don't just mean a serious court case. I don't know who that is. God is just asking me to announce that you have a court case. This is a serious issue and the Lord wants to show you mercy here. Who is that person? Come. You are wearing white. A court case. Is there someone like that? You have a court case. I want to pray for you. If God brought you out, it's because he wants to change your story. Please, if God calls your case, would you just double up so that we'll hurry up and pray to help us to attend to others too. Who is Adamo? Adamo. Ah, God, oh. What's your name? Where are you coming from? Yobi. I will pray for you. What is your name? Dominion, sir. Huh? Dominion. Sir, can I pray for you? Yes, sir. Don't be embarrassed. Huh? You are yes. in trouble. This trouble that I see you in, if God does not help you, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you behind bars. Yes, sir. I need to pray for you. You understand what I'm saying? I do, I sir. don't mean to embarrass you. I do, But sir. what you need is to pray for the mercy of God. Yes, sir. Because justice, the assignment of justice is to have its course. But yes, now sir. we are standing to pray for mercy. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, so I, I will not say more than that. But God is going to, we are going sir, to pray. Sir, I'm being summoned by a shrine. I'm supposed to die next tomorrow. My friend, don't worry. Just... You didn't have to. Don't worry. When you see me conceal certain things, don't worry. My own is to pray for you. Okay? Hello, Madonna. and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus because the Lord brought you here tonight. Let tonight for some of you be a night of mercy. Let tonight be a night of mercy. Let tonight be a night of mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. There are three of you here. The kind of money you are owing now, there is nobody on his own who will give you that money. You have missed the deadline by at least four months. You are in trouble right now. You need the mercy of God. The thing is not about begging the bank to give you another loan. There is a spirit behind this. No matter, see, look, I'm not against loan. Listen to me now, so don't misunderstand me. But you collect loan with the waster. There is a spirit called the waster. As you are collecting it, something will happen and you will keep going down until you are left with nothing. How do you think the wife of the sons of the prophet was so in debt that they were about to carry the children? It's good to do business. You can collect loan. There are many bankers here, but receive this grace first. Then whatever you have can now profit you. The prophet had to speak first. He said, go and borrow. So borrowing is not wrong, but borrow when you receive prophecy first. Personally, you know, but I, I respect whatever it is, but make sure that there are no spirits standing behind to just waste your resources. How many of you have tried to pour water in a basket? You pour water, will it ever get filled? No. You can stand there for 38 years trying to fill a basket. The first thing is to mend to take away that basket and have a correct container. And in five minutes, your container will be filled. It's not that you are wrongly positioned. It's that what you are holding is not what the water can feel. Let me pray for you. You will watch the wonder-working power of the prophetic. I know the lion. I know the lamb. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lion. 
Supernatural help for you now. For those who have been appointed unto death, I call on the God of my covenant. May He show mercy. May He show mercy. May He show mercy. May He show mercy. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare the helpers that must arise and help you to take away shame and embarrassment. And hear me for anyone here who is being oppressed because you do not have someone to help you i pray let ebenezer arise now i'm not just praying for those in front i'm praying for someone who is scattered anywhere you have been oppressed i call on ebenezer to arise for you now arise for you now arise for you now in the name of jesus christ and I declare the same way you came out here you will come and stand to testify in the name of Jesus Christ 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 so shall it be God bless you please return to your seat rejoicing hallelujah hallelujah how many of you are in business, serious, active business, and genuine, non-destructive business? Listen to my descriptions. I will never, never pray for anything that destroys genuine, scriptural business. Lift your hands, and you are serious. I just sensed an anointing, and I started seeing, you know how a printing, uh, this thing they use in the bank that prints money, what they call that thing? The counting machine. I just saw it now. And I know that there is a grace. I want to pray. Now, I know that there are people who think that, um, look, there is a prophetic dimension to wealth. Oh, believe it. I want to pray that prayer. There are two of you right now. There is a strong anointing. The business you are doing now is not what you will be doing to prosper. Two of you. An anointing is coming on you right now as I'm speaking. Da -da 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 -da. I want to pray for you. Please believe this prayer and you will marvel and wonder at what the power of God is able to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, even as you have opened my eyes to see, I don't know whose hands these resources have must enter, but in the name of Jesus, in the name of he who died and rose from the dead, even the one who helps men, I release these resources to your hands now. I release these resources to your hands now speedily so in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah when Elisha prophesied and said by this time tomorrow there was a man who looked and said forget it even if God will open the windows of heaven might these things be and Elisha looked at him and said because you have insulted God you have insulted the prophetic your eyes will see it so that you will know God is just but you will not eat of it and they trampled that man at the gate of breakthrough one step for him to enter he died because of unbelief let me pray for someone again who was too afraid to receive the first time perhaps because you think the amount you need is much I'm talking of God who is Ebenezer the stone of help I decree and declare one more time may this resources enter your hand may these resources enter your hands hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them 
because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.